Lesson 3-1, Writing Expressions and Equations. The main idea of this lesson is to be able to write verbal phrases and sentences as simple algebraic expressions and equations. Basically, this lesson is about being able to translate between math and English sentences. So if you think of equations as um, written in the language of math, and these words here on this page are written in English, we're going to translate between those two. In order to be able to do this translation, there are some key words that we need to know. The words listed here are all words that mean addition. So some, more than, increased by, and in all are all clues that, that um, addition is the operation that's happening. Difference, less than, less, and decreased by are some words that also mean subtraction. Each, product, multiplied, and twice are all words that also mean multiplication, and divide, quotient, per, and separate are also all words that mean division. It's a good idea to have these words written down somewhere so that you can reference them as we're working through this lesson today. So we're gonna do three examples today. <clears throat> and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take each sentence and write it as an algebraic expression. So in other words, translate it from English into math. Here's our first example. $5 more than Jennifer earned. What I like to do with these sorts of examples is to underline the important words that go together. So first we have five. That's an important word for us to know. Also, I see the phrase more than here, and I remember seeing that on the slide previously. And then the last important phrase here is Jennifer earned. So in other words, $5 more than Jennifer earned. And what we're going to do is we're going to translate each of these parts individually. So we're going to start by writing 5 in math. Well, we write 5 in math by writing that symbol. <clears throat> now I'm going to go back to our list of keywords to find the word more than. And I see the word more than listed under addition. So that means we must be adding. So I'm going to put a plus sign. And then the last part that we have here is Jennifer earned. We don't know how much Jennifer earned right now, so that means that we need to represent that with some sort of variable, maybe a J for Jennifer. So there we have five plus J. That's the same as this sentence right here. Also, since addition can be written in any order and it doesn't matter, you could also have J plus five. Both of those equations or algebraic expressions are equivalent to each other. So we underlined the important words, and we translated each of those words individually. Here's our next example. Six less than a number is 20. So we have the word six. That's something important. Then we have less than. Then we have a number. The word is and 20. So all of these words in this sentence are important, but notice that I underlined them group and grouping certain words together. So whenever you see the word is, that means equal. So let's add that to our list of key words over here. Is means equal. So that means wherever you see an is, you can put an equal sign. So let's start by doing that. We have the equal sign. So that means everything on this side of the is is going to be on the left side of the equal sign, and everything on this side of the is is going to be on the right side of the equal sign. So I'm going to start just by putting this 20 down here on the right side of the equal sign. Now we have the right side of the equal sign all taken care of. All we have left is the 6 less than a number. So what we could do is we could look at the phrase less than. Let's go back to our keywords chart. And I see the word less than listed here under subtraction. So that means less than means subtraction. Now I know that subtraction, it matters what order we put them in um, in order to do the operation. It's not like addition where you can put them in any order you want to. So that means we need to make sure we get the six and the a number part in the right spots. A number, we don't know what number it is, so that means we can represent a number with a variable, let's say n, since we don't know that. And we're going to represent the word 6 with the number 6. 
So now we need to make sure that we get these two things in the right order. Do we want n minus 6 or do we want 6 minus n? Well, since it says 6 less than a number, I happen to know from experience that what needs to happen is the variable needs to go first because we need to have the number first and then we need to be able to take the 6 away from it. So just as a little clue, whenever you see a phrase some number less than something, this something is going to go first and then this part over here is going to go second. And there we have it, n minus 6 equals 20. Here's the last example that we're going to do today. 3 times Jack's age equals 12. So we have 3, that's an important word, times is another one. We have Jack's age equals and 12. Remember, <clears throat> equals is going to be is going to be represented by an equal sign. So that means this is going to be the right hand side of the equal sign and this is going to be the left hand. So that means I'm going to take this 12 and put this down here. I'm going to look at the word times and I'm going to go back to my keyword chart and find the word times and it's actually not listed anywhere here but I know that times is another word for multiplication so let's just add that to our list. There's an I there, times. Okay, so that means we're going to be multiplying. And then we have three and we have Jack's age. Well, multiplication is one of those operations like addition that it doesn't matter what order you multiply them in. So we're just going to take three and translate that into a number. And then we're going to take Jack's age and we're going to translate since we don't know what that is, we have to translate that into some sort of variable. Let's say j. And then we're going to represent that with multiplication. So we could just write 3j is equal to 12. Or you could put parentheses around the j if you wanted to. Or you could write it with a dot. It doesn't matter. Either one of those. So you could write it like this. Or you could write it like this. All three of those ways of writing that are correct. And that's how you translate words into math. You underline the important words, you refer back to your keyword chart, help you figure out what operation that you're going to do, and for operations that it matters what order the numbers are put in, you make sure that you um, take a look at it and make sure that you have the numbers in the right order and that's what you really, in there, the way that you really want them.